All right, welcome. Welcome to a new horizon. And that's, say, the title of the book of Joel. And I got it here. The title of the book, A New Horizon. Now here are the, all the essentials in it. Like the essentials that Joel loves to share. And the recommended chapters that you should read and know better than your own name. Or at least almost the same then. And um, yeah, today there's a chapter that's called Love Thy Neighbor. And that sounds like a New Testament. And it is. <laughs> so uh, the great thing is that we can look into it today and discover more about what it uh, entails, why Joel would put it in the book, so to speak, why, why he thinks it is so essential um, that we have to take a look at it and say open our hearts, you could say, for the information, for that, for this given in that chapter. Now that's what we're doing today and I'm using the book pretty much like I use, I will read parts of it. I will, um, I will highlight some of the expressions that are in it, some questions that are, uh, say, asked, like what is this, what is that, and um, yeah. So that this is a deepening um, study, you could say, that we do, and yeah, that that makes it very interesting because to to stay still with it, to actually uh, take a, just a look together at at this, what is given, uh, is is quite something. If you realize that what is in the book is not just the words what is in the book is also not just only about joel's experience with it no this is about a universal experience that is yeah in fact yours so it's an individual experience of something universal and that something universal is um, yeah you in in your i amness <laughs> in in that what you truly are now, to receive these words, to receive actually what is being shared, um, we always have to realize that with your human ears you don't hear it. And to, in order to receive it, it is great to, to take time to, to relax into a listening attitude and to, to come to um, a relaxation first. So that's, that's good to know. In other words, we start with the idea that we're not going anywhere, that what is true about you has always been true and that can never be taken from you. But this is purely, in fact, to re-establish what is yours in your consciousness. It is already there, but it's not in your awareness or it's not all the time in your awareness or it yeah, you, you lost it, who knows? Like you might have lost it, you think that you lost it. And in times, at times you totally lose it. I think that there's separation, that you're not it's like in perfect communication with your creator. So these are just, in fact, we can call normal things for a human being or for you in your spiritual awakening that are occurrences that just take place and um, invite you in fact to to come back to a realization to come back to a remembrance to a deep uh, feeling of oh yes i'm home i'm home in heaven oh yeah here's grace the grace of god oh yeah this is by with by, by which i live now, this is that um, so it's it's always experiential like it would not be sufficient to to just think it or to to contemplate it in terms of pondering it as an as an concept now it has to bring you further than that and and it's made to bring you further than that uh, the reminders that are given are in fact you could say portals uh, doors where you can in fact if you allow them to affect you 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 actually have a possibility to to get to what it actually says to start to hear what it actually says now we're say 
focusing or directing our attention to that. And so that means you, this is not what you do in a human conversation. So the activity is totally different. And that makes it easier for you now to just relax and, and try to receive and to become receptive, in fact, to open your mind and, and leave your concepts for what they are, all your concerns and all this, but also thinking that you know what's in this book. Like, no, you don't know what's in this book. This is brand new. It's like, if you want the liveliness of what is actually given by what is in here, if you want to experience the uh, liveness of it, you you have to come to the idea that you, in this moment, don't know what that is or how that could come to you. You would not know. And if you think you would know how to do that, then that would only be in the way for you to have a full experience. So you can say this is the instruction for receiving this totally, is to, in fact, be totally open to receive it and not having any kind of objection or no first receive this first receive this from coming from a desire that you want to know who you truly are and going deep inside yourself to actually come into the realm of your soul hearing in fact it's singing for its creator, for the source, for God, for for your yeah your totality, you could say. Hear it sing, hear it um, celebrate. You could also say it's like celebrating that your soul is celebrating the love of God. It's it's what it does. It's naturally what it does. How could it not be if it is in complete accord, like in complete unity with its creator like that that is that is what a celebration is in a true sense all right so love your neighbor then what is that how do we do that so we see bible phrases uh, from the new testament coming to us but joel asks you a couple of questions like what is this love of god like how how is that different or what is that? Uh, where does it? Yeah, where does it come from? What is it? And uh, so we, hopefully, we find answers to that. That would be great. But but see, the answers are not found in the book. So before you say misdirect your attention, like no, this this answer is found in you. Now you've heard that said too, like, yeah, the answer is in me, but who, what am I? Who am I? And how can I receive that answer? How, how do you do that? Now, all these things are coming to us uh, all the time, but here in this um, chapter it is specifically directed to one fundamental recognition, and that is starting to come to know what neighbor actually is. Now what Joel does in this chapter, he's expanding that idea, not just to the one living next door, or not just the one that you're in relationship with, or that you suddenly meet in the street, or see in your news program, or who knows what. Like, no, that's not that that say, idea of neighbor goes much further than that. So you can say like everything that you are in relationship with is your neighbor. So and that goes so far as um, events, circumstances, and persons, things even, he says to things. You are in relationship with things. Now, love your neighbor, I thought it was just with somebody, someone, someone that is related to someone. But here Joel says, no, 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 it goes further than that. So it's like a discovery that no matter what you think is going on, you're in relationship with what you reject or what you accept, like you're still in relationship with it. 
So to come to an idea of love thy neighbor is in fact then to invite everything in, to resist not evil, to invite everything in, include it in, in, in the totality of your mind, uh, recognizing in that same way that there is nothing outside your consciousness. So that's where we end with that then. Like it's all inclusive in your consciousness. Does it matter if it's a person, thing, situation, circumstance? No, it doesn't matter at all. No, this is an all inclusive um, definition, you could say, an all inclusive action of mind to include. That is what love is, like total inclusion, unity no rejection, no separation, no distinguishing, no competition, no, uh, yeah, all of these things, like none of that, none of that, no unity, equality, inclusion, totality, and, and that's what love is, that is what you are. Now that's, see, you see, like, okay, wow, that's like five steps further than I thought this would be. I know. So now we're going to take a look at some of the expressions of Joel to see how we can yeah, hear what it says. Um, so I made something for that. Um, we always use this, and, and it's so handy um, because, in fact, Love thy neighbor. And this is from the book Practicing the Presence. It's chapter 5 from the book Practicing the Presence. And the funny part is that if you go to uh, Joel Goldsmith books right now, for this month, um, you see that the free chapter that you can read is specifically this. Love thy neighbor. The chapter 5 from the book Practicing the Presence. You can you can um, yeah, download it or uh, you can directly see it online. You can read it if you sign up for, um, if you say log in into the website, you can actually read that page, read that chapter. But we're just taking a look at it now. So here we go. Now I thought like let's like let's let's get Matthew over here in the greatest commandment and Joel <coughs> Joel uses uh, only 37 to 39 but I had like okay let's take a look at this uh, where does this come from in the bible so Matthew 20 I think it is Matthew 20 34 I start here the greatest commandment and to put it in some kind of context, as, in, as a narrative, I do it like this. But when the Pharisees has, had heard that he had put the Sadducees in silence, they were gathered together. Now that's, I didn't want to miss that. Here's, it's interesting. So it's like the Sadducees, who are the Sadducees? Well, the Sadducees are actually the ones you could say protecting the law of Moses, protecting it like, like a really fanatic. So Jesus brings them to silence. He has put them to silence. And the Pharisees heard that. The Pharisees are the ones who know everything about the Old Testament. But the Sadducees are really like protecting it. Uh, but Jesus say put them to silence so that they could listen what he actually has to say and the Pharisees heard that they were not so well we'll see what happens and then one of them one of the Pharisees which was a lawyer so he he knew the fine words of all of this too very much so like into every he could spell it in every letter asked him a question, tempting him and saying, okay, so like, well, we have here the law of, uh, what, what was it, Caesar? Uh, the law of, uh, yeah, the law of Moses, the law of, well, there must be many laws in the city, many laws all, everywhere, and we know them exactly. So now you, master, are going to tell me 
what is the most great commandment in the law? You tell me. Like we have the law of Moses. Now you tell me which one is the most important. So it's like you, you could feel the, the tension rising in the temple. You could say the tension was rising in the temple. Uh, everyone was like waiting for the answer to see if they could attack Jesus or not, or to, to be critical or who knows what. And then Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. These commandments, on these commandments hang all the law and the prophets. It's the most important. Now we don't go deeper into the, um, into the story, but this is of course interesting. So it's like, well, they didn't expect this as, as the answer, for sure not. That's why it has such an incredible impact. When you hear it, it's like, ah, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind. So you, could, you can say, this is the loveliness of it. It's like, it's a corrective, you could say, corrective expression, totally correcting everything. It's like, if you only have one idea that would be uh, trying to get something out of this to attack your brother, it would be impossible. So it's like, well, they, they really didn't like the answer. So to speak. <laughs> they could not do anything with it. Now, this is really great because, say, fundamentally, the, um, it puts you as a human being, you could say, with all your intellect and all your capacity to react and to compete and to fight and to debate and, and challenge and compete and all this stuff, you cannot go anywhere with it. Like you can literally do nothing with it. If this is spoken, like you love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, all of it, all of your mind. And your neighbor as yourself, loving your neighbor as yourself. So it's like, that is okay. There's no space for anything else. It's really like this. It's like, Wambo, now what? Now what? Here it is. Here it is. It's total. There's no way to discuss this. There's no way to get rid of this. There's no way to even try to go anywhere with it. Whether you studied law for a hundred years or two hundred years, whether you know the prophets and the, the law and all the old books, the Torah, if you knew it by heart and you would try to do anything with with this, if you follow this instruction, there's nothing left of it. The, your whole attack would like, completely miss the point. So you could say it is an absolutely almost like dismantling uh, expression what Jesus gives here. It is literally an, an portal being offered a portal of if i follow this instruction if i just could catch like 10 percent of it already i i would never have a question anymore about anything i would completely um, say dissolve in my love for god so if i would, would just be willing to do that for 10 percent, you could say the 90%, we saw this in the other chapter, the 90% will be completely covered by the Christ. You literally say, disappear into the light that is, uh, in fact, provided here to disappear into that. Totally amazing. Now, this is just the start. This is Matthew 20 and sharing it. Um, Jesus is sharing just, in fact, one line. And... And what you're going to do with that? Nothing. You cannot do anything with it, except it will 
it will do something with you when you hear it. Now you can say like, well, if I want to reject this, I can. Sure, you can. So that's what they did, of course. So they rejected that and see what the result of that is. It's, it's like horrible. That's horrible. So it's like you can reject everything, of course, but then you actually didn't follow the instruction. You wanted an answer to a question, right? You wanted to know an answer to the question. That's why you asked for it. Now you have the answer. And in fact, it had nothing to do with anything that could bind anyone here. No, it set you free completely. Now this, this is, um, in fact, your, your yeah, portal of awakening. So that's love your neighbor. That's only one part of that. Like love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. The instruction is very, very simple. Totally simple. It's a commandment. It's, yeah, it's an invitation. I love to call it an invitation. So this is great. So that's only the start. Can you imagine? Okay, so yeah, I told you this. Oh yeah, Sadducee, a member of the Jewish sect or party of the time of Christ that denied the resurrection of the dead, the existence of spirit and the obligation of oral tradition, emphasizing acceptance of the written law alone. But he got them quiet, so they had to listen to what he said. Jesus, Jesus silenced them for a moment, saying, like, wait, 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 listen, listen here. I'll give an answer to your question. So what is love in spiritual sense? And uh, what is the love which is God? What is that? So what is the love in spiritual sense? Mm, so that's good. We come to that. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Yeah, you can say like, well, a love of God that you didn't see is probably easier than the one that's really upsetting you. That's one thing, but uh, that would be a human way of looking at it. So this goes further. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar like you're fooling yourself that's not what love is you cannot love god and hate your neighbor that just doesn't fly together let us understand that anything of we can become aware is a neighbor here we go see here's the definition of neighbor it is expanding right here anything that we can become aware of is a neighbor whether it appears as a person a place or a thing Every idea in consciousness is a neighbor. Now you probably haven't heard that before, unless you have read the book, then it's then you know this. So, so it's like it's everything that you can be in relationship with. As we give as we rise above our humanhood to a higher dimension of life in which we understand our neighbor to be pure spiritual being god governed neither good nor bad we are truly loving so this is just a simple expression of joel in fact stating this it's like as we rise above our humanhood to a higher dimension of life in which we understand our neighbor to be pure spiritual being god governed neither good nor bad we are truly loving now that's interesting so as we rise above our humanhood to a higher dimension of life. So how do we do that? Like, how can you bring that about? And it's like, well, you can't. You cannot bring that about, but it can happen. It can be your experience, but you cannot bring that about. So in, in, an, uh, so it's like in, in the rising above humanhood, that's that is already like part of the spiritual process that you're in so that means that you uh, are discovering that you can open up for a whole new experience of yourself 
and that's what we call like a spiritual experience but you cannot talk yourself into it or you cannot by repeating a bible bible phrase for a hundred times suddenly that happens like no no that's not what that is about so you can basically open up for it and then and then in, in fact it can come to you but you cannot do that yourself like it's not a conscious um, uh, move or a constant a conscious uh, way of doing that no it's it's in fact not f um, done by you so that's that is really important to remember so if you th think that you can and you do something that will not lead to the experience that we're talking about it might lead to something but not to a spiritual experience that, that you need to keep that in mind so if we rise above our humanhood that can happen just like this it's like it can happen by you being open and receptive just like we started the, this meeting with yeah relax into it like we're not going anywhere what is true about you will always be true now we're just trying to get in say contact with that so that's exactly what this is it's like you you open up for the experience of something else that can come to you now yeah breathe and relax and be willing be open and receptive that is all and it will happen you it's guaranteed like it did happen um yeah there's an there's a total uh, certainty in that you will receive that and if you don't feel that certainty you can definitely say borrow it you could say for borrow it from joel or borrow it from me or from jesus or from whoever it's like whoever is certain in this you can you can borrow that certainty you don't have to do that all by yourself now there's a specific reason for that and this is really interesting in fact this is what joel is ex ex expressing in this uh, latest statement that i shared um, when you come into truly loving your neighbor as yourself you discover that he is yourself that there is no difference between your brother and you all the differences that we perceive with our five senses have nothing to do with with the unity that is uh, inherent now the unity you can experience by having a spiritual experience like a moment of an intense feeling of oneness of a recognition that yeah of the your love for god that would be sufficient it's like love your neighbor of love your god with all of your heart your soul and your mind in in that activity you you come into an ex, uh, experience of the unity of everything so you recognize your your neighbor is yourself now in that light you could say it's very easy to see that you're one with your brother in this light that we say are opening ourselves up to it is very easy to to recognize i'm one with my brother absolutely no doubt i can feel that like i feel the the relationship that we have in in a recognition that is way beyond uh, human limitation and that is what you say practice more and more but also the experiences of that become deeper and deeper the more you allow that the deeper you go into it and until it yeah until it becomes your um, the recognition that there is not something else too that there's not an, a world with a separate objects or separate and uh, separate neighbors and that are upsetting you i think no you can't fool yourself at a certain point you can't fool yourself anymore you recognize that the only thing that you're dealing with is really yourself so that there, there's no need to attack anyone because why would you attack yourself it's really like that and and that is great because it, it like you correct it, it corrects itself you could say like it brings it closer to your experience that there's nothing else but the unity with god and it's an all-inclusive unity like everything is part of that 
as we rise above our humanhood to a higher dimension of life in which we understand our neighbor to be pure spiritual being, God governed, neither good nor bad, we are truly loving. Love is the law of God. When we are in tune with divine love, loving whether it be friend or enemy, and then love is a gentle thing bringing peace. So here I like to say something about this. It's like the experience of love or the experience in fact of recognizing who you truly are, the all-inclusive part that is loving God, that is what you are. Like that's the only place where you are at peace. You love your God with all of your heart and all of your soul. That is the place that you can be at peace. And peace is, is not just some kind of quietude. No, it is, it is a deep experience of connectedness, of, crea yeah, of creation, in fact. So, to... Um, uh, let me see. It's like to uh, see this, or to experience this in in our uh, relationships. You could say it always comes back to, oh no, there's nothing outside of me. No, there's only this connection. Like there's only me loving God. What do I recognize then? I recognize that I'm the effect of God. That God is my source. In that. I'm literally connected with everything and everyone. Now, everyone I meet is becomes part of that or becomes in my awareness of it, part of it. And I say it's because in fact there is only one. There is, there is a total unity. There are no different parts. But in my awakening process I'm dealing with moments in which I perceive things outside myself, when I start to include them in, when I recognize myself as who I truly am, loving God with all of my heart, I'm opening up, literally, I'm completely open to love everyone or to recognize that, that whoever is with me is created by the same source. It's like we're of one kind just like you're one with God, you're of one kind. I and my father are of one kind. And my brother is of one kind too, because we share the same source, we have the same father. And, and that's why that becomes more and more obvious in our experience of ourselves. But like I said, this has to do with a development of that in your consciousness in which that becomes your, say, total experience. That is something that grows into that. And, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to even talk about that, in fact, because uh, it, is, it is such an individual uh, experience. Like, I, I, when I look at it, it's like I, I recognize how that works, but I cannot express it. That's the interesting part. Like, yeah, my deepest feelings, my deepest uh, experiences with that, uh, I would not be able to share with you. But I, I can share the love that I am with you by just being myself, by, by being open to, uh, say, feeling my love for God. That communicates with everything, everything and so with you. Yeah, so what am I trying to say here? It's like love is n not an action you do to someone else or loving your neighbor is not an action to your brother. No, it's, it's a recognition of your, say, one, um, oneness in your relationship with God, like you're one. You are what love is, in other words. You are what love is. Now, does that mean that you like everyone that you meet? No, it doesn't mean that. Like, no, it has nothing to do with it. But you, you are what love is. You don't have to do something for that, is what I'm saying. Like, it's a matter of being that. In your recognition of your love for God, you are that. 
And does that influence your behavior? Not necessarily. It's not, no, but it does influence your experience of yourself completely. So this takes care of, of thinking that in order to love someone or something, that you need to do something as an act of love to prove it or something. Like that is not what this is, because that would be a denial of it, really. It's like you, you in fact, um, extra, put some extra emphasis on the fact that you are loving someone outside of you or something. I don't know. It's like, no, you are what love is, that is centered in you, by you recognizing your love for your father, or feeling that, ex experiencing that. And so that's so essential to, to uh, have that so as an experience. I love to read in the introduction by the publisher uh, what this chapter is actually about. Okay, so what they say here is this. Chapter 7, Love Thy Neighbor, also from Practicing the Presence, is Joel's seminal outpouring of instruction about relationships, focusing on all aspects of love. That's what it says as a summary. Now, like a, an outpouring of instruction about relationships, focusing on all aspects of love. So I'm reading something from the uh, chapter. Oh yeah, it was Matthew 22, yeah, the two great commandments. Um, I had underlined it. Yeah, here. This is about forgiveness then. So what is, what is that? As we forgive, divine love is flowing out from us as we pray for our enemies, we are loving divinely. Praying for our friends profiteth nothing. The greatest rewards of prayer come when we learn to set aside specific uh, periods every day to pray for those who despitefully use you, to pray for those who persecute you, to pray for those who are our enemies. Not only personal enemies, because we are some people who have no personal enemies, but religious, racial or national enemies. We learn to pray, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. When we pray for our enemies and what we pray that their eyes be opened for the truth, many times these enemies become our friends. Now that's interesting, always when Joel says it like this, we pray for our enemies when we pray that their eyes be open to truth and like well that is that's that's great <laughs> that's great say praying that their eyes will be opened but i always say it like this it's like who is perceiving this enemy it's you i'm sorry it's you you perceive this enemy. This enemy doesn't exist. Why does it exist? Right here. Is it existing somewhere else? No. Is there such thing as an enemy? No, there isn't. There isn't. So forgiving your enemies, in fact, getting over your own ideas about what an enemy could be or what you think somebody's doing to you, that's basically it, forgetting that like forgetting anything that you think about your brother like that is did not happen that is a non-occurrence it took place in the time that is over and here we are the only one perceiving that is you and there's nothing outside your consciousness so you will have to open your eyes in order to see that so that's that's a little bit different, I understand. Like that's a little bit different than Joel teaches it here, but it's totally helpful. That's why I'm sharing it. Otherwise you keep forgiving everyone and keeping busy with everyone that needs to open their eyes while you don't see the beam in your own. Like this is what Jesus said many times. Like you, 
you recognize a splinter in the eye of your brother, but don't recognize their own beam in your eye. Well, let's start with the beam in your own eye. You're the one perceiving this. Nobody else is. So here it comes back. You want to forgive? Great. There's nothing wrong with your neighbor. There's nothing wrong with your enemy. There's nothing wrong with your president. There's nothing wrong with that one that seems to be torturing. There's nothing wrong with anything like that. It's like, no, who's perceiving that? You are. It's like, it starts here. Here's where it can change. Here's why I can change my mind. I can forgive. I can give it away. It's like, that is not what it truly is. What was the commandment again? Loving my neighbor with loving God with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind. Is there space for trying to heal someone else? No, there's not. No, there simply isn't. This is about you. It's like coming into the recognition that I'm perceiving this. I take responsibility for that. I'm I'm opening myself up to love my Lord with all of my heart. When I do that, where's my enemy? I just disappeared. I recognized in him the Christ. I recognized who he truly is. Is that what loving is and what forgiveness is? Yes. So, yeah, this is always great. Like nobody needs to wake up here. Nobody needs to wake up but one, which is you. You need to wake up seeing that there's nothing else going on than you loving your father with all of your heart. The rest is a temptation to think that there could be something else. And there isn't. Simple as that. So I'm telling this to myself. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm telling this to myself. And you asked me to tell you this too. Well, I recognize the, the Christ in you, the totality of the, yeah, the truth of you, because I recognize that in myself. And, and that's what unites us. That's what makes us see like, oh my God, there's only one of us. There is, how could I not love you? Like, how could I not love God? If he, say, literally gave me you, to love and recognize our oneness together. Now this is where the true miracle happens. We recognize our common source together. In this moment, it is happening. Is that what healing is? Yeah, absolutely. Sure, absolutely. Uh, do you need to open yourself up for that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I need to do that. I need to do that. Like opening up for this love for my father allowing to feel that with every cell of my body so my body is included in this too every cell of my body is expressing the love for my creator like that's where you come to that is what the resurrection is and is there anything else going on no there is nothing else going on it is a total experience Right, let's see if Joel has more to say. Okay, so here's an expression. When we have established that state of purity within ourselves, then we can ask the Father, give me grace, give me understanding, give me peace, give me this day my daily bread. Give me this day my spiritual bread, spiritual understanding. Give me forgiveness, even for those harmless trespasses which I have unwrittenly committed. It's like in this purity. Well, he says something before that too. I stand in relationship to God as a son. See, this is what I meant. It's like God is my source. I'm the effect of it. God is my father. I'm his son. And therefore, I stand in relationship with every man as a brother because we we share the same father. Literally, we're we're one in that. 
So when we have established that purity within ourselves, in fact, we already are experiencing grace. It's like that is all happening in the same time. When you experience that, when you experience the totality of your mind, when you ex see that you're one with your brother, you are experiencing grace. You are experiencing understanding. You literally come into the, say, total experience of the unity. It is not something that needs to happen then still. No, in this recognition that takes place. So that's why it's always like it's either totally that or it is nothing. It is you're either in a total experience of your love for God or, or you're not in it. And you, you experience yeah, whatever you think you experience. So this is so yeah, it's so good to, to take a look at because in fact the essence of, of this what Joel is sharing is uh, very helpful in terms of like it's essential because you need to come in touch with, with this idea, with the possibility of uh, recognizing your brother as yourself. This is literally what is going on. You recognize your brother as yourself, and you you recognize that you that the only thing that you need to do, in fact, is loving your neighbor. Uh, love, sorry, loving the Lord thy God with all of your heart. Like that is always the direction. You don't know how to do that, but you 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 give everything like not holding back no reserve no second thought no doubt no just giving everything in that wow that happens like that can open up you suddenly you feel your heart opening up you feel your mind opening up you feel that something is completely shifting and changing through you and and, and here's that possible here suddenly something else happens in, in which there is a recognition of the totality of you. Okay, try one more. Um, oh yeah, here's one more. Our method of loving our brother as ourselves is in this realization. The good in our brother is of God and his power. The evil in our brother is not power, not power against us, and in the na last analysis, not even power against him. Once he awakens to truth. To love our brother means to know the truth about our brother. To know that that in him, which is God, of God, is power, and that, is, that in him, which is not of God, is not power then we are truly loving our brother. See, our method of loving our brother as ourselves is in a realization. It's not any, anywhere else. It's in a realization. The evil in our brother is not power, and the good in our brother is, is of God. So it's like, okay, that's a bit uh, complicated to say it like that, but it comes down to the same as what we were sharing today. Like, if I recognize my brother uh, as myself, to love my brother as myself, see that we share a common source, in fact, that takes place, that, that is given to us. That recognition is really what a miracle is. Like, you, you literally are experiencing your connectedness with your brother. Well, if you experience your connectedness of your brother, that cannot be without uh, your connectedness in God. That's, that is what we learn, in fact. That's why Jesus continuously asking you to forgive. So, it's like, that is your act, you could say. That is, that is your practice of letting that occur. Yeah. Otherwise, it is like, well, if I love God, it will be all right. I do enough. Like, I, yeah, I really hate my my neighbor, but I love God. I go to church, or I do this and that. I pray for hours, and I have great a, a great feeling about that. 
uh, but in the meantime I'm still hitting my brothers like no 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 that's n that's not how this works so Jesus is continuously in fact instructing to forgive uh, recognizing that there is nothing outside of you that you can hate without hating yourself so it's like you if you think you love God by hating your brother and loving God at the same time, it's like that's that is conflict that you can't solve. Like that doesn't go together. That that has nothing to do with love. Yeah. So it brings it close to yourself. Like um, to the way that I express it is in fact to to make it even more your own experience because. Um, it saves time to recognize that you're the one, that you that this is happening in you, that by you forgiving your neighbor, in fact, by recognizing that you were the one perceiving the mistake, um, can it resolve really quickly, easily. But if you think you have to wait till your neighbor shows a different behavior or something uh, in which you can confirm that uh, some kind of healing took place, you can be here for a very long time. So that's why I'm using this in a in a slightly different, uh, say, angle, you could say, in a slightly different way. But that's only with the purpose of saving you time. And the saving of time is really what saving of time of suffering is. So that is an expression of my love for you. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, so here's an, uh, also an attempt of Joel to express this in a, in a great way. I am you. My interest is your interest. Your interest is mine, since the one life animates our being, the one soul, the one spirit of God. Anything we do for each other, we do because of the principle that binds us together. Like in the recognition of our common source, we're willing to do anything for our brother. And like, yeah, you recognize that you're one with him. Of course, it's like you want to give everything to him. You walk an extra mile for your brother, right? So that is an act of charity, you could say, an act of giving. Well, that's, that's exactly what love is. Love is charity in, in Corinthians. Like love is charity, it's, it's an act of giving. And by r recognizing that you're one with your brother, you only give to yourself. In fact, it is you give only to yourself because your brother is yourself. I am one with you. You are one with me. And we recognize our oneness in God. In our experience of God, it becomes obvious that we share a common source. Because that's where our joy is. That's where the real thing happens. So, okay, take one more look in the book <laughs> um, to make sure that we get everything out of it. So what just, what just Joe will say at the end? Oh, this is really beautiful. So Joe ends with this. Uh, this is Matthew 25, uh, 34 to 40. Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came to me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when, we, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, and thirsty, and gave thee drink. 
When saw we thee, stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee, sick, sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it to one of the least of these of my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Like, there's no difference in that, because I am that, I am all of that. When you give to one, you give it to me. When you give to some other one, it's what you give to me, what you give to yourself. It's like, that's where the unity comes to expression. There's a unity in, in our actions. So we give to each other, we give to one another. Uh, and give to ourselves at the same time and give to Jesus give to you know it's like give to the master why not because he is yourself there's no difference there's no differentiation there's no levels no so that's really lovely loving your neighbor as yourself because he is you all right, so thank you so much for joining today in this uh, in this meeting that we have in this um, a new horizon. So this was essential that we heard this, and I'm really happy to share that with you. And maybe I'll see you next week. Thank you for everything, and I see you soon. Thank you for now.